Hey, thanks for stopping by my neck of the woods. I'm the gig geezer in Wood Lane, and when I'm out there driving, I'm out there to make some money. I want to help you maximize your gig hustle. You notice the boxes in the back row. Um, those are Federal Express parcels. I also have a bed filled up with parcels and boxes and packages, also with Federal Express. Um, this is a part of a, a Federal Express program in which you use your personal vehicle uh, to deliver their parcels. Uh, basically, it's a seasonal program. And this is my second year now doing it. This is my second day. Today, I started yesterday, November 5th. Today is Saturday, November 6th. Now, when I started last year, it was about this time last year uh, when I started. And uh, when I, and the way this program is set up with this particular franchisee, uh, you get paid per day a flat amount. In my case, last year it was $120 a day. They bumped it up to $130 a day this year. Um, while I am strictly a 1099 and I get to claim all the miles driven and all that stuff and whatever expenses that are attached to it, they do take out taxes. Now, uh, for the gig geezer, that definitely helps when uh, come tax time that I actually paid some taxes. Um, but by and large, I am still a 1099. And again, the miles that I drive, whatever expenses that are that I actually incur while doing this, those are those are expenses that I can claim. I can stop anytime I want to, but um, I, I'd like I like the money that comes in because it complements what I do with DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, Bike Squad, and Instacart, which are my primary sources of income. Now, because of me making that per diem, it actually takes some pressure off me uh, with money made per day. Um, uh, it's actually a nice change of pace in that I'm not thinking about being on point for three and a half hours um, in the first half of my hustle and another three and a half on the second half of the hustle. I'm still driving, but I'm doing something different. This program is very, is a kind to what you may see with uh, people using their personal vehicles when they're delivering UPS um, parcels. Uh, very similar, but with UPS, by and large, the people are paid per hour. Um, anywhere between what 21 to 28 dollars an hour. I'm just giving that range because I've not seen the actual numbers, but I know that they get paid per hour, at least with most of the uh, personal vehicle programs with UPS. This is also very much a kind to the uh, Amazon Flex program, which I did for almost a year uh, between 2018 and 2019. Now, with Amazon Flex, you have your blocks that you try to swipe for, kind of like uh, Instacart. Uh, it's very much like Instacart, in fact, in terms of swiping for blocks. Now, those blocks go from eight from uh, $18 an hour up to however much, depending on demand. Uh, when I did Amazon Flex, the biggest block that I swiped for was like for $120, but they had changed it. But that was a long route that people really cut. Well, that's another story though. But $120 is the largest block that I ever swiped for with uh, Amazon Flex. I swiped a lot of 80 and a lot of $80 blocks, a couple of $90 blocks, a lot of $70 plus blocks. And of course, for me, the basic one was like in the 60s. So, for what I'm making um, per day doing Federal Express, it would take two three-hour Amazon uh, flex blocks. If you get a four-hour block, then it'll be a, a, a four-hour and maybe a two-hour uh, two block. So at least six hours of block time that you would have to swipe for with Amazon flex to equal this same money. Now, the $130 is very much on par with what the gig geezer makes, um, you know, with a that would be considered a rather solid uh, uh, hustle if I were to go out there and do DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, uh, Bite Squad, and Instacart. That would be very, very, very um, solid one, 130. Um, but the goal is, if I if I work, if I play my cards right, um, particularly when I go back out and do the evening hustle, um, if I shoot for $125 a day, $120, that'd be $250 a day. And, you know, that'd be some pretty good money at this time of the year. 
So, um, I, I've gone into very much detail on that. Um, how do you how do you do this? Okay, with Federal Express, you have a scanner that you you don't have to scan in your um, parcels. That's already that that the, the route has already been determined by and large when you get these these racks or or um, or bins that um, that has the uh, parcels that you're going to deliver. Those bins are your route, and so uh, those um, you're going to have. From what I can tell, after two days, I'm going to have at a minimum 50, 50 stops um, to make, and whenever I come out here today, it's going to be about eighty. Even though my manifest showed 68 stops I had to pin in another 18 um, parcels um, now how you how you organize those parcels that is on you there's a variety of ways of skinning a cat so to speak um, I know of drivers as myself what we like to do is put our hands physically on every parcel so that we know where they are what they look like I have try to recall what they look like because that helps when you actually set up your vehicle for your route. <laughs> now, in this particular case, if you look back here, I got stuff all up there. I've got stuff. Um, I've got stuff in the front seat. I've got stuff in the bed of this vehicle. Um, but they are kind of there's there's that coordinated chaos as what I like to use. Um, I kind of know where they're clumped together because of how I set up my route. Um, my goal with these 80 stops is to finish by about 3.30 today. I actually clocked on. I actually showed up at um, 9.30, but it wasn't until about 9.45 until, a bay, uh, until I knew what my route was going to be uh, at the warehouse. Um, but then it took me about an hour <laughs> to get everything all organized. And that is very common. Um, most of the time, you're going to spend, at least doing with, with the Federal Express opportunity that I have, um, you're going to spend most of your time setting up your route so that when you go out there, all you have to do is just to start delivering, check off on your manifest where you're going, and then scan, scan the apps, scan the parcels for delivery. Now, how does that compare to Amazon Flex? Well, what, now I know that there have been some changes with Amazon Flex, but what I remember with Amazon Flex, and you can correct me, um, now with Amazon Flex, you had no idea what your route were going to, was going to be. Uh, you pretty much didn't have any say-so with anything. Um, it got to a point where you had 15 minutes to load up your vehicle and be out there. So all you could do was really, it was on you to, the way it was is that, okay, if you had 15 minutes to load up your vehicle, so you threw everything in your vehicle, however way you could, and then you went somewhere else and then and then set up your route. Um, now, you could go according to what the app tell you, or you can figure it out like I would do a lot of times. And now, when I did Amazon Flex, um, everything was numerical, so what I did was I clumped everything according to the numbers and then kind of figured it out from there. With uh, Federal Express, it's kind of the same thing, but I, at least in my opinion, at least for me, what works is the fact that I kind of know where I'm going, and then I can I can call some audibles along the way when there are parcels that are not on the manifest, and that's what happened today, where I had about a dozen of them that does not show up on there. But when I when I hit the scanner, guess what? Then it'll it'll prompt me to add add the parcel and then mark it as delivered. That's kind of how what's going to happen. And I am at stop number 20. I'm a little under an hour and 15 minutes into this uh, route. So that means I'm about one quarter of the way through. I'm getting close to what I would say is mid-season, late-season form where I get anywhere in upwards between 22 and 25 stops in an hour. The biggest thing is when you're doing this is your organization of your parcels in your vehicle and then plotting out where you have to go. If anything, since I've been out delivering, the most time I've spent is just plotting out where the next stops are going to be, as in this series, what I call my second batch of stops, because um, there, were some, there were some streets that I just wasn't familiar with, even though I've been in this area many times before, previously with uh, Amazon Flex program and delivering food for you, uh, as I've often said, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, Instacart, and Bite Squad. So that's where I'm at right now, 20. Um, 
hour, hour and 15 minutes in. I'm on pace to finish between 3.30 and 3.45. And if I do that, I consider it a win. I'm going to elaborate once more about knowing your market. The reason being is that I mentioned in another gig user segment that you can't always depend on the on the gig apps to get you where you need to be. Um, the reason being is that um, sometimes they're in a, as best as they try to coordinate um, your stops and all. They can send you in a loop, <laughs> run you, have you running around in circles. Um, they could also um, be very um, inefficient in terms of time. Um, I believe that I save myself anywhere between 30, 45 minutes, even an hour based on me plotting out my own routes once I have the manifest. And that's the sheet of paper that tells you what all your stops are supposed to be. Remember, I mentioned already that I had to add um, 12 stops um, manually. So, um, yeah, that's something I tend to keep in mind when you're doing these type of uh, gigs. So, um, yeah, so I'd mentioned about in, in another segment that you need to have like Google Maps. And if you're dealing with a brand new subdivision, what you may need um, is the uh, county GIS maps, which is the tax maps. Um, those tax maps are invaluable when you're dealing with brand new subdivisions and brand new developments. But in this case right now, me using Google Maps to actually um, physically see the um, addresses and where I'm going has been a big help so far in how I've been able to uh, make up time or conserve time. Okay, we are now two hours into this uh, route. I have completed 30 stops. I've lost some ground. And <clears throat> what had happened was um, I had to kind of crisscross back for two stops um, that I missed plotting. And that happens. And I'm actually going back to a third stop. And this one is all the way back to really the beginning. Um, I actually marked this one as number one. And if I'd gone according to the route that uh, Federal Express had given me, this would have been stop number one. No, it would not have been stop number one. But anyway, I missed this one, and so I'm having to go back. But I should um, make up some ground on the next uh, 20 so stops. I mean, I should really pick up some ground within the next hour when I check back in. So hopefully I'm going to be around 50, 52 stops, somewhere in there, 50 to 55 stops. And if I am there, I should be done by 3.30, between 3.30 and 3.45. So we'll see. I'll check back in a little bit. So... One of, the other things that, one of the other things that I want to mention about the Federal Express program, and probably you can say with the UPS program, is that they compare way better than uh, Amazon Flex and how you're treated and um, just really how you're paid. Amazon Flex, a lot of people say, oh, that's great money. I mean, $18 an hour, $54 blocks. Yeah, those are for thirsties. Thirsties grab the $54 blocks. Someone who's got a real sense for money ain't going to grab a $54 block or a $57 block or maybe even a $60 block unless really things are just that bad. Just to grab one to be grabbing? No. Um, the other thing is that you're treated, you're treated like a person. At least it's been my experience so far with Federal Express. You're treated as a person. You're not treated as a blip on the algorithm like with Amazon Flex. I mean, it is just like with your DoorDash Grubhub, Uber Eats, um, well, th those main three, and possibly even Instacart, um, you're, you're one delivery away from, or one block away from get, receiving a friendly, well-written email that um, alerts you of some type of fraudulent activity. In the case of Amazon Flex, you're that one, you're that friendly, well-written email away from something apprising you of a potential uh, terms of agreement violation or an allegation by a uh, recipient or a customer that you um, damaged their property and it's unfounded and you don't even know what they're talking about. Um, and then when you respond, they do nothing. Basically, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless to try to defend yourself with Amazon Flex. All that is true is that you're you're just one block away from being deactivated. That's the best way of describing it. And when you are deact when you do get that email, you have no basis of defending yourself because you don't even know what you're being deactivated for nine and a half times out of ten. Um, I've not had any of those experiences with uh, the Federal Express program. Um, 
just know that um, it's, it's, it's a, the difference is night and day between um, Federal Express, UPS, and Amazon Flex. Amazon Flex is, is, is the bottom. It's like Amazon Flex to me is like working at Kentucky Chicken, McDonald's, Popeye's, um, or even as a delivery driver dealing with Popeye's, Kentucky Chicken, McDonald's, Wendy's. They're at the bottom of the barrel. So um, obviously I don't have much good to say about Amazon Flex program. And even if I were still with them, I would say the same thing. The one good thing that I would say about Amazon Flex is that um, I came on around Thanksgiving of 2018. It was about a few weeks after I'd started with Rody, and it opened me to a different world of gig economy money. Whereas I'd been dealing with Uber and Lyft, Rideshare, um, all of a sudden now I did have to deal with um, uh, petulant, spoiled, uh, petulant, uh, that's your $5 words for today, petulant, spoiled uh, college students who would come in, start filling with your radio, turning it up to the, up, up to the level number 99 asking if you ha- if I had an auxiliary cord if I could turn if I could turn on the air if I could turn on the heat um just just things that was just that you were powerless to actually um uh have any say so about and and as it is with Uber and Lyft the same thing you are one ride away from deactivation or that friendly well-written email alleging something that you were in violation of so it was cool that um you know all of a sudden boxes and parcels and packages they didn't talk they didn't ask those questions they didn't do all those really crazy unruly crazy things and uh you know the money was actually on par and maybe even a little better um for the time that i did amazon flex in about 11 months i made roughly 35 34 thousand dollars and that's pretty good so that meant i averaged um over three g's a month of course i do way better than that now doing uh food delivery and all but it, it started it started something for me that um, has made a difference in my life. Okay, checking in now at the three hour mark and I have just completed my 51st stop. Um, that is a little off pace. It's close. It's not exactly where I want to be, but it is close. I said 50 to 55 the last time and I'm at 50 I'm in that range but it's not the most optimal number that I would like. Um, I do have a bunch of um, drop-offs that are going to occur pretty fast order coming up. Um, This is just one of them. In fact, you're coming with me. Um, But like I said, this is is one where um, this is how it's done. You get the parcel, you use the um, scanner. Then in this particular case, I got to enter it in because of of um, it not being in the manifest. Then I have to mark it as whether residential or business. And then I say where I'm gonna put it, front door, and then I say done, and I'm out of it. So that's number 52 in the books, but you see how it's done. I am on a stretch that I would call my little mini racetrack where um, it's gonna be a lot of stops in succession, even though I'm covering a lot of ground in between stops. That's another thing, when you're doing these type of um, doing these type of gigs here, um, a lot of it has to do with uh, where your stops are. If they're spread out, of course, that means that you're gonna have to take more time because you've got more distance to cover. If the, if the route is pretty compact, then guess what? You don't have to travel as far and you're able to get probably more done. But if the route is more compact, you probably got multiple parcels to drop off um, within um, within um, those, those stops. I don't. I don't have a bunch of multiple parcels. These are a lot of single drop-offs. And when there's when there's single drop-offs, they take time, man. They just take time. And uh, again, for the third time I've mentioned it, I can't stress enough how important it is to have your um, route um, route organized correctly, all your parcels in order, um, so that you can uh, make make quick you know make quick drop-offs. Well, I'm back in here, and I'm heading to the next. Uh, drop off. Um, one thing that I've noticed a lot when you're out there on route is you'll have Amazon Flex drivers, and I'm calling them out, um, be it the van drivers or even the Flex drivers. I said the Amazon Flex drivers, but I also meant the van companies, those people that you see in the Amazon local vans. 
unless the rules have changed, they are not supposed to put parcels in the mailbox. They are supposed to get out of their vehicle and put them on the step or wherever there is it's supposed to be designated. Only U.S. United States Postal Service people are supposed to put stuff in mailboxes. That is a federal offense. And if they get caught doing that, they could be fined or put sent to jail. So, um, that's probably one of the more consuming, time-consuming things about doing this is the fact that you got to get in and out of your vehicle multiple times throughout the day, uh, throughout your route to do this. Um, in this case, I've got to get out what eight, in upwards of 80 times. But it's good exercise. I mean, that's what the geezer says. It's good exercise. It keeps me in shape. And the doctor's happy about it, especially at this stage in life. So being that it is about 3.15, hopefully I can get 18 stops done in about 45 minutes. I mean, hey, I, I've done as many as 25 stops in an hour when I was at uh, mid-season, late-season form last year. And it looks like I'm getting up to speed pretty fast. I mean, I had an hour in which I did uh, 21.22. So if I were to base that on 45 minutes, 25, about 15, so it'd be cutting it close. I'll be cutting it close, that's for sure. But it is it is conceivable, so that's what I'm be working for. All right, well, the gig geezer finished that route in just, just over four and a half hours. Um, I was finished about 10 after the hour, so let's call it four and a half hours. Um, there was 79 stops. Um, if I were to compare it to yesterday, it was a modest improvement. Uh, I averaged about 17 and a half uh, stops per hour as opposed to a little over 15 and a half stops yesterday. Uh, so that says that I am getting, you know, I'm, I'm making some quick progress. So that's all there. So that's all for this segment of the Gig Geezer. Um, I hope that I may have enlightened you to something else in terms of the gig hustles that are out there and maybe I may have inspired you that you may want to do the the uh, Federal Express thing if an opportunity presents itself in your market um, it's not a bad deal it's not a bad gig consider um, when you compare it to Amazon Flex and I know it sounds like that I'm rather critical of Amazon Flex but I am because I for as much as a, as, a, as an opportunity that Amazon Flex presented me in terms of a uh, different way of making gig economy money, Amazon Flex is rather ruthless. As <laughs> simple as that. I mean, um, you face the possibility of being deactivated if you take too long, too many times with completing your routes. Um, and there are other ways and reasons that you can be deactivated, but a lot of them, you may not ever know why. All you, all you get is an email saying that you have violated terms of service too many times, and that's it. And there's no recourse. There's no appeal. You don't even know why you've gotten deactivated, but you've been deactivated, and if you try to launch an appeal, it's pointless because you don't know, you don't have a basis to um, make that appeal. So, um, again... Give it some thought. Um, and, and also, if I may say, um, and what a lot of people say, diversify your income stream. An opportunity like this could help you with your taxes. And that's something I mentioned at the onset of this, um, at least with um, the third party people who I'm working through with Federal Express, um, they take out taxes. Uh, but I am still considered a 1099. I get the claim to miles that I'm, that I'm working or I'm driving. Um, I'm also... Uh, I'm also free to go about this as I please. I'm an independent contractor, and that's cool. Uh, the only thing they care about is really getting those parcels delivered. That's what they care about. Yes, they keep up with the metrics. They know what you're doing. Um, but uh, I guess it's a nice thing when they call, when they contact you, they reach out to you and ask, you, hey, you'd like to come back again this year? Then you know you've done something right. And so uh, with that, that's, enough. that's a wrap with this segment of the Gig Geezer. I'm Inwood Lane, and may your hustle continue. Thank you for checking out this segment of the Gig Geezer. If you like the content that's been provided, hey, hit that subscribe button, and also give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or useful information that you'd like to pass on to the Gig Geezer, I can be reached at giggeezer3.5 at gmail.com.